In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make an RS3 mechanism. So obviously, this is not for you to go and design your own 3x3 tree tree and 3D print it because there are already so many different mass produced models out there that actually use this mechanism and they're all probably going to be much better than what a 3D printer can possibly make. But at the same time, it's useful to understand this mechanism so that if you want to go and design your own twisty puzzles of other shape, uh, this is quite a viable way to get the best out of both stability and reverse corner cutting. So what exactly is an RS3? I'm just going to recycle this clip from a past video that I made. The VIN on the other hand has an RS3 Mac. The centerpiece is squared off at the tip for extra stability, but the corner is hollowed at the same height where the square tip would be preventing the tip from obstructing the reverse corner cutting. So first, I'm going to start uh, the same way as how I, I design most of my cubes. Uh, this one, uh, you can learn it from other tutorials. Uh, I learned this one from NK Cubes, so polyhedron generator. And I'm going to make a cube. I'm going to make it uh, any size I want. So I'm going to make it 57 mm. So next, I'm going to click on front plane, and just for speed purposes, I'm not going to draw the sketch to proportion all the layers. I sort of memorize the numbers in place. In this case, this line is going to be 9.5 if I want the cube to be proportional. And then, okay, here is what I'm going to do differently from designing a regular 3x3, which is I'm going to build a way long Mac. Um, it might seem strange at first. Why am I trying to build a way long when I'm designing an RS3? but I will show you the reason why later. So there are probably many ways to go about doing this, but this is specifically my method. So the way long has a few lines here. Uh, let me just proportion them to look nicer. And then this line, it has a very special number to follow, 54.7. 3, 6, actually 54.74 is good enough. I just like the extra decimal place. And lastly, I want this one to be, these, these two points is going to be vertical. So why this number? It is mainly for the straight corner stock. If you want to know the reason why the calculation behind it, I explained it in my how to make a 4x4 video. You can refer to that if you want. I'm going to save this sketch and I'm going to go to construction axis. I'm going to click on this cube. Okay, and then the software requires me to click on the origin first and then true faces the body. The polyhedron is the cube. And I'm just going to make a big number to make the axis visible. Next, I'm going to revolve. I'm going to revolve this sketch around this axis. Then I'm going to click on circular pattern and copy paste this this surface around an axis, so I need to select an axis. So now this surface is copy pasted around this axis. So I've got four of them. This will cut the cube up into one by one by three, but I need to chop off the top layer at the same time. So I'm going to do a transform, click on any one of them. I'm going to rotate by 90 degrees. Then need me to choose an axis and remember to click on copy part. Afterwards, we're going to do multi-surface split. Bodies to split is the cube itself. Then click on entities to split with. And then we click on all the surfaces that we have on screen right now. So this sort of chops off the top layer. And now I'm just going to delete all the replica parts. So now the next step is to clean up the pieces. So for the corner, Okay, there is more to do later if you want, but uh, right now, I would say that the way long corner is structurally similar to the RS3 corner and there's not much need to change anything. The center is the next piece that I want to modify. Okay, I think the first step is uh, I'm going to make some room for the corner to slide over the center. So first, I'm going to move face. I'm going to click on all four of these. Like, just go around the wing of the way long and then make it 0.5 and it's actually pushing it up. I need to click on opposite direction. So now you notice the final shape is a bit lower. So now there's some extra room for the corner to move around. Another thing I want to do is I'm going to delete face. So this is because I, I assume the cube is stock, stockless. So 
this stock is not supposed to be here. This space is sort of going to be occupied by the screw once the piece is finished. So I'm just going to delete it first. And now I can proceed to round the piece. So the function here is called fillet. And I'm just going to round off the sides of the center piece. And notice that I'm only rounding off the top. The bottom will stay where it is. Now I'm going to round off the bottom, but as you see, it doesn't, because of the way long wing, when I round it, it doesn't go at the same angle as the top part. And this is very important. Like it, and it's very useful for actually making the, the spike of the RS3 Mac. So in this case, uh, I'm going to just round it by a very big number because um, this is the part that's really going to affect the reverse corner cutting if it's not big enough. Then I'm going to add on uh, a favorable fillet. So this allows me to round off the top more than the bottom. So I'm going to click on the top. Since I made the bottom 7, I'm going to make it make the top 9. So this is uh, a round center. So now I'm going to trim the center piece. Click on the top of the center piece and press on N to go like, uh, this is a keyboard shortcut, go normal to the surface. Then I click on sketch, I click on center point rectangle. And then I'm going to draw a rectangle. Or actually two rectangles, make sure the outer one is bigger than the inner one. And then, uh, the outer one, the size is not very important, but the middle one, the inner one, I'm going to make the two sides equal, so it's a square. And I'm going to make one side coincidence with the center. Like that. Next, I'm going to extrude. I'm going to click on remove. And I'm going to click on the sketches. So notice this is actually activating the the outer square without the inner square in it, so it will leave behind everything that's in the inner square. So click on merge scope. This this merge scope here just means everything you want to cut, which in this case I want to cut this centerpiece and nothing else. And then yeah, save this command and notice that I actually have something that looks a lot like the RS3 center. This is because this angle, this this like the 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 tip of the way long's wing is rounded off at a different angle from the corner. So this is the same angle as the corner stock. It's like, you notice the tip of the wing follows the same angle as the corner stock. This tip is actually reverse corner cutting against the corner stock. It's not reverse corner cutting against the corner head. So it has to be round and the corner stock has to be correspondingly round. But notice when you reverse corner cut, the head never touches this square tip and it's cutting against what is mostly an empty space. Uh, the, when the corner is finished, it will be correspondingly round. So this is fundamentally the basic functional part of the RS3 mechanism. For the edge, this is where I actually encountered quite a number of software glitches. So I hope I can do a relatively glitch free way. I think every software has its own set of glitches to do. So I'm going to hide other parts and just leave behind the edge. So the first thing I want to do is to seal off this gap. So delete the wings, which I would say de deleting the wings might be easier. So let me just do that first. Delete face and I can click on the top. Uh, if your software doesn't have this function, it's also possible to just draw a sketch on the flat face itself and then do a cut extrude to cut away the wing. But in this case, I can use the delete face function. And then the next thing I'm going to do is seal up these two gaps and the move face function works where I can click on this and then it, it actually, let me show you what it does with a smaller number. It actually moves this face downwards, but in this case, uh, the bigger number doesn't glitch up the software so I can move it down all the way. If not, you can try very manual methods of like just drawing a prism and extending it or even trying to create a second cube with the exact same dimensions but uh, without the way long cuts. But anyway, our, our end goal here is just to have a normal looking edge. So in, may, in a way, this is a very normal looking edge. Quite a number of strange things would happen when filleting the edge. So the sequence here, the sequence I show you here may not be the ultimate like, way to go about doing things. It's just a possible way. So well, what I want to do first is to create the normal cut. 
So I'm going to create, I'm going to make this one four millimeters and then click on asymmetric. So, okay, in this case, because I've, I had a pass attempt, I already had the number seven inside, but notice it's facing the wrong direction. I want the, this side to be seven and the, the other side to be four, but you can always click this arrow to flip it around. Then I'm going to repeat it on the other side, or if you're going to, some, some people would prefer to just cut the edge in half and just design half and print it along with its mirror image. Doesn't really matter. Okay. Next, I also want to round off this part on the side. So I'm going to click on the fillets and make this one, one mm. This, this is only a problem that you encounter with cylindrical cubes. If you're doing a spherical design, you will probably avoid having to do this entirely. And notice the side here looks very ugly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new plane by clicking on the two corners here and clicking on the origin. Then I'm going to click on plane one, click on section view so I can see the cross section. And I'm just going to make my own sketch. So what I actually want to do is I want to cut off this part here just by a very slight margin. Okay, I'm going to exit section view for now. So I want to click on this corner here. In this case, since I can't, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on this corner and click on this face and click coincidence. Yeah, and it still lines up. And next, I'm going to make this. Okay, I'm just going to decide on the heights of this line. In this case, 20 is very close. Yeah, I just need to be higher than the 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 ugly butt. Then I can okay, I saved the sketch by accident, but of course I can always reopen it with edit. So I'm gonna click on the opposite line, click on the line that I just made 20 and then make them equal. And then next I'm gonna click on this thing and click on this line and make it one 135 degrees. Uh because that's 90 plus 45. And yeah, just do the same on the other side. And then I'm going to do a cut extrude. So click on extrude, click on remove, click on the sketch that I just made. And then I need it to be symmetric because I'm going to cut both ways. And this sort of cuts out the, the really ugly part. So I have a much cleaner looking edge. Yeah, this is just a very brute force way of getting things done. Of course, I need to round off this tip as well. So I'm not too sure if any of you have noticed, but some cubes actually made their edges a little bit shorter. So I'm just going to make this 0.5 and then shoot it in this way. Yeah, you can compare with some cubes. Their edges are actually a little bit shorter than the corners. One downside of having a center layer that's as thin as the screw is the layer is also limited in how much you can round it in this case i can only round it maximum by 1.5 so let me just round this part here because like if you round it anymore it's yeah the, the two sides will overlap with each other so some cubes actually avoid this by making it a little bit shorter so that the there's less room for the corner to catch on to. And the stability is still not compromised by a lot since the corner base is the main thing that is made bigger when you shrink the center stock down to the size of just the screw alone. And uh, for the corner, I don't have much special things to say. I'm just going to first round off the stock, which 1.5 is decent. Then I'm going to round off the sides here. For this one, I'm just going to make a big number, let's say 4. And then I'm going to make the top like 7. So I'm going to click on asymmetric. Um, no, not, maybe not asymmetric. I'm going to click on variable fillet. Say wrongly. Um, click on vertices, which is the top here. And I'm going to make this 7.
And lastly, the prevent corner twist. And then we'll click on construction axis. Again, I need the line to be very long, 90 millimeters. Origin is the origin. So let me click on that. Faces and vertices. In this case, we are going through the tip of the corner. So now I have an axis that goes through the tip of the corner. I can just click on, now I can click on the corner and generate a sketch. And then click on this and click on that. And now I'm going to extrude this thing. In this case, it's an additive sketch, not a remover. And I'm going to make it one millimeter, or you can do one point two if you're afraid of it breaking. And then I'm going to click on sketch four. Notice it's going out of the cube. I don't want that. I want it to go inside. So now I have a squared off corner. If if you don't want if actually another thing you can do here is okay, click on sketch for click edit. If you don't want it to be perfectly square, you can actually round it off slightly using oh uh, yeah, this is called the sketch fillet. It's right here. And you can just click on this corner here. Of course I don't want it to be so round, so I can make it like three. Yeah, and then I save the sketch. So now sketch four has a rounded corner here and then the the other command below here which extrude tree it, since it occurs lower down the chain it, it also follows the the new modification of sketch 4 that i made so now i extruded around that corner so the next thing i'm going to do is circular pattern okay first i, I need it to be a feature pattern not a part pattern then i'm going to click on extrude tree because this will copy the this squared off corner around that axis of pattern is the new is the previous axis I just generated but notice it's supposed to, it, it will default copy to four times in this case I only want it to copy three times at uh, regular angles and then I need to click on reapply features and now we have a normal looking corner if you want to process the pieces and round it off even more it's up to you but I would say this is more or less the complete shape of what an RS tree should look like. And finally, here is a feature that I wouldn't really expect you to add, but uh, it's present in the actual RS tree, and that's the double torpedo. Uh, this one is, it will probably give your 3D printer a lot of trouble if you try to print this, because it requires quite a lot of precise cuts, but anyway, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disassociate this line from this origin first. So I'm going to delete this. Two point five. And 